I have been asked many times, what troubles me about the way the church is going today? First of all, I'm not, um, I'm not wise enough to sit in judgment upon the church. Secondly, I have faith in the promise that the church is going to triumph. Now, the church militant and the church triumphant are two different things. The church triumphant will, however, come out of the church militant. So I'm not discouraged about my church at all. There's going to be a shaking time. And the Lord's servant says, surface readers anchored nowhere will be like shifting sand that I believe. But don't go judging who will go out and who will stay. Some that you think are going are going to become stronger than ever and stay. And some that you think were staying are going to walk away, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They're going to follow people. They're going to follow convenience. They're going to follow ease. So in that sense, I'm very confident about my church. I believe the promises of God. My burden is to be in that group by His grace that will triumph. Now, what troubles me? I'll tell you frankly, it's our unwillingness now to preach the plain message that God gave us to preach. The three angels' messages of Revelation 14 are given to us in particular as a mandate to carry to all the world. I see us not quite doing that today. Oh, we have learned sermons. Good sir, we got some talented men. And when they stand up, they hold you spellbound. But our message is not just a feel-good message. Or if you'll allow me to be very frank, it's not just a gravy message. It's a message of substance. In all my evangelism and Men that I know, Earl Cleveland used to say something like this, I'd rather you think than shout. The ultimate objective is not to touch you emotionally. And yet, when I was in school, a man named Evans wrote one of the books we used in homiletics, and he said, appeal first to the intellect, then to the emotions, and through them both to the will. That's okay. And Ellen White says, when you consider the passion of Jesus, his blood, his death, his suffering, and you are not emotional, it's a sin. So there's a place for emotions, but not first place. Appeal first to the intellect. Ours is a message, not a feeling. It's not just a lot of nice things you say. It is a specific message. Now, when I pastored, I tried to do my best, and... I had divisions of sermons. Sabbath, I called pastoral. Sunday night, I called evangelistic. Wednesday night, I called apocalyptic. On Wednesday nights, I like to talk about the sealing work, the shaking time. These were things especially pertinent to members of the church. And so that's what my burden is today. And yet I know the torch is passed, and young men are going to be used of God to do it. My confidence is strong. But let's get the work done by preaching the message God has given to us. And God has a people, and their reason for existing is to live the knowledge God has given to them. Thus they become models to other men and women everywhere, if you out there are shaken and moved and looking for something better, then here is the model group. These are they that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to model the message in dress, in food, in recreation, and above all, in worship. We don't have to learn worship by watching television. God is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. So, as a man getting old, and I never thought I'd say that, as a man getting old, my heart goes out to all of you in confidence, the confidence that the church will triumph, and that you who want to be saved may 
by the power and love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray for each other.